Welcome back to another episode of Good Kid Bad YouTube Channel. In this epic episode, we are going to be looking at the, the the Kendrick Lamar discography. We're going to be ranking it from the worst album to the best album with a little bit of precursor information. That precursor information being that I am not talking about the Black Panther soundtrack or Untitled Unmastered, but the rest of Kendrick's discography is going to be here, including overly dedicated an album that I completely overlooked until I decided to do this ranking. It's also going to include Section 80 and, of course, those big four, which are To Pimp a Butterfly, Damn, Good Kid, Mad City, and, of course, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. So, without wasting any more time, let's get into this ranking, starting with the worst Kendrick Lamar album. Overly Dedicated is the work of an artist in progress. The work of an artist trying to develop a sound and a style. And that's not to say that the album doesn't have its own sense of sound and style and presence. It's just that you're going to see Kendrick Lamar, because you do have some serious lyrical themes going on throughout the album, and you do have somewhat of a consistent tone. But if you listen to something like Michael Jordan, you're going to get a very half-baked song with Kendrick Lamar, you can tell that there is, like, a, the genius is here. Like, you can see, like, him trying to burst out of his shell. And I think he kind of does in the next album on this list, which is... Yeah, there really was not another place on this list for Section 80. It is very securely wedged between Overly Dedicated and the rest of his discography. But Section 80 is still a really solid rap album. A lot of people think that it's his debut because some people say that Overly Dedicated... I don't even know that... I, don't, I really don't know what officially... Some people say this is his debut album, so... And that the Overly Dedicated is like a mixtape. Overly Dedicated is like an hour long, and I don't really... The line between mixtape and album is, is blurry to me. I, it's not always clear. But... Point is, Section 80 is really good. It's not my favorite thing in the world. I really don't... I don't have a lot to say about it because I don't ever listen to it. But I have listened to the rest of the, the Kendrick Lamar discography in great length. And let's talk about that. Daddy issues kept me competitive. That's a fact, nigga. I don't give a fuck what's the narrative. I am that nigga. Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. I actually did do a whole separate video on this album. Going over it in extremely sparse detail. Um, you can... I'll link that review down in the description any other Kendrick Lamar related content any other reviews I've done or top 10 lists that have Kendrick Lamar on them but um this album is very very good and I guarantee you will see it in my top 10 I think I have liked it more than that original reaction because this album is so meaty Mr. Around the Big Steppers just has so much content so many ideas lyrically so many beat switches the songs are like this is like one of his least accessible. I would say if it's Big Four, this is the least accessible album. And a lot of people think that To Pimp a Butterfly isn't very accessible, but this, even I think despite its best efforts, because sometimes it does try to feel like it could be something that's popular, but it's not an easy album to listen to or digest, so you really need to give it a lot of time and attention. If this album is falling very low in your personal ranking, if you don't feel super positively about it, I would encourage you to just keep coming back to it. Because this is an album that has a lot of layers, and they just... I, I learn something new. I take something away from the album every time I listen to it, it feels like. And um, very quality production also. It is... And quality writing, quality performances. Quality stuff. Great album. You looking like an easy come up, yeah, bitch. Yeah, bitch. A hey, silver yeah, spoon, I know you come from... Mass hallucinations, baby. I want to reconnect with your elations. This is your station, baby. Bro, this album is so good. It's crazy. It is absolutely crazy that you can make a video ranking artist discography and the third best album from the artist is as amazing, is as much as a, of a masterpiece album. Like basically any other artist, this would be their best album. But with Kendrick Lamar, I'm putting it at number three. Good Kid Mad City is a banger from start to finish. But I don't love every single track, and that really is what's keeping it back for me, because I'm not crazy about the song Poetic Justice, I'm not crazy about the song Shireen, I almost never listen to the song Sing About Me, I'm Dying of Thirst, even though I can acknowledge that it's a very good song. Then again, there's some very underrated songs on here, like Good Kid, or songs like Frickin' Real. 
Like, there's good stuff on this album. It's a masterpiece of an album, but it's not my favorite thing in the world. Darn. Or dang. Or whatever PG friendly word you would like to you would like to call this album crap. Um, no, it's not crap. It's a it's a great album. It's a great album. Um, Darn or dang is a great Kendrick Lamar album. Excellent, excellent content. Great songs. Um, but it's a lot more than that. <laughs> it's a lot more than that. This album won a Pulitzer Prize for in a music category that's only given to classical albums, classic or jazz, and they gave it to Kendrick Lamar for um, representing the black experience through music or something like that. I don't I don't remember what the reasoning was, but the point is the album is um, a lot. It's very good. Um, I don't know how to talk about it. I've never reviewed it on the, on the channel. And um, it's very, very good stuff. I, I mean, I really, literally, I don't know how to explain how, what makes the album so transcendent as far as rap albums go that makes it more than music, that makes it more than an album. But it somehow is. And I think it's, I think it's part of the mundaneness of the album in the lyrical content he's describing. Like he's going through like the everyday lives of people in his community, but not in the same way that he did, like in a more personal light than it is on Good Kid Mad City, even though that album is personal. But Good Kid Mad City is like more kind of epic. It's more like st telling stories. And this is like my everyday life and just more mundane things. And of course the production and the writing is fantastic. So it's an amazing album. This is one of my favorite albums of all time. This is like in my top 10 favorite albums ever of all time. I love it so much. My favorite album of 2015. Link that video in the description. My favorite song of all time. It's on this album. It's all right. I've been I've been debating if I do have a favorite song of all time and I think I'm going to I'm going to sit with this one. I'm going to say it's all right for the sake of this video and for now. But um if it's not my favorite song of all time, it's tied with some other songs as my favorite song of all time because it's hard to pick just one. But this album has made me very emotional in the past. It's um, it's very powerful. Songs like The Black of the Berry and songs like How Much a Dollar Costs, All Right is even very powerful and meaningful. King Kunta is just a bop. Mortal Man is a fantastic closer. The narrative of the album is great. It's full of just raw emotion and performances. And um, all the songs are fantastic. These Walls is fantastic. Like, come on, bro. Like, the whole album is just... I, I could not give it to... As amazing as Good Kid Mad City and Darn are, I could not put those above this album. Like, I could not. Because I love this album so much. I, I really do think this is his magnum opus. I think this is his masterpiece. He's never going to make an album on this level again. And I'm saying that because he has made such masterpieces after this album and even before it, but nothing is going to come close, in my opinion, to this. I, I, don't, I wouldn't put um, Damn in the, anywhere close to this. Like, this is, like, well, well and far, by far the best Kendrick Lamar album, in my opinion. I love it. And that's all I got for you guys today. I'm very curious. How would you rank the Kendrick Lamar albums? I've had this argument with my brother before, and he ranks them. I don't I don't know. The top three, he ranks them. Um, to Pimp a Butterfly, Damn, and then Good Kid, Mad City. So we both love Damn, but um, yeah, we disagree on <laughs> To Pimp a Butterfly. I know a lot of people feel that way. I know a lot of people say that Good Kid, Mad City is the masterpiece. But I personally think that To Pimp a Butterfly is even more timeless. Even though Good Kid, Mad City is very arguably... I'm not very arguably. Most people would probably say that album is timeless in a lot of ways. But I think that To Pimp a Butterfly will be even more timeless. And is more powerful and more um, complete of an album. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Have a great rest of your day.